Chapter 22 The Universal Genie We have seen how the dialogue between our thoughts and our brain unfolds to create the feelings within us. But the story doesn't end there. The feelings we generate are emitted beyond the confines of our body to permeate the field of energy that links all of creation, the universal mind. This amorphous sea of intelligence is a living organism that is highly responsive to our communication. Our thoughts transpose to feelings, and our feelings transpose into waves of energy that we radiate. These emissions are impressed with information that corresponds directly to the way we think and feel. Subsequently, this information causes quantum changes in the mosaic of consciousness that connects us all. This body of consciousness then responds by creating circumstances conducive to our inner disposition. In effect, the whole world becomes a huge mirror, reflecting back to us that which we project. Ancient and indigenous people had an excellent understanding of this phenomenon and utilized it to great advantage. The way in which they prayed was somewhat different from the way in which we do it today. They would mentally focus on whatever they hoped to achieve through prayer. For example, a healing, a request for rain, or the provision of food and allow their internal imagery to expand to such an extent that it became lifelike, feeling, hearing, smelling, and tasting the very essence of their desire. They would absorb themselves in their imagination and have a profound belief that their prayers had been granted. Notice I use present tense here, had been granted, not would be granted. Believing their prayers would be granted negated the process because would implies something that will happen in the future. And the future is a psychological concept that never arrives. We only ever have the eternal continuum of the now. When the indigenous people prayed for rain, they would imagine billowing clouds forming in the sky and bursting open to give life to their crops. Turning their senses inwardly, they would feel, hear, see, and taste the rain. When they prayed for a healing, they would imagine the sick person in perfect health, feeling and seeing the healing, now in the present moment. The underlying theory behind their success is that every possibility already exists in the field of infinite possibilities. The possibility of drought, the possibility of rain, the possibility of disease, the possibility of perfect health. We just have to choose from these possibilities. The way in which we choose is determined by the focus of our mind and the extent of the supporting feelings. For our prayers to be granted, we must believe that they have manifested with every rudiment of our being. Innumerable reports of miraculous results have emerged as a result of using this technique. Rain in the middle of droughts, healings of the incurable, peace in war-torn areas, and crops sprouting in infertile ground. The list is endless. So what does this information mean to the person on the alcoholic to alchemist journey? It means we can create any circumstances we want. By focusing intently on that which we aspire to achieve and evoking powerful feelings to support it, we radiate a request to the universal mind. When we propagate feelings of well-being, the field responds by creating circumstances conducive to well-being. When we broadcast feelings of lack and poverty, the field responds by creating scarcity. Like a faithful servant, it doesn't determine whether your requests are in your best interest or not. It never judges. It simply responds. The universal mind is akin to a genie that grants your every request. Think it, feel it, transmit it, and await the results. Sounds great. Infallible. And it is for those who live life consciously. But most of the population of this planet live life unconsciously. Most people are under the spell of social hypnosis and way out of touch with their feelings. 
Every moment of our lives, we are generating feelings that produce quantum changes in the universal matrix of intelligence that surrounds and permeates everything. You might say we are in a constant state of prayer, sending out a continuous string of requests. As most people live life unconsciously, they do not know what information they are emitting. Their feelings are generated from an unconscious level, so they exercise no control over them. As a consequence, the requests they are making to the universal genie are often ambiguous or detrimental. Can you imagine having the capacity to wish for anything you desire in life and not knowing it? Furthermore, in your ignorance, you inadvertently ask for all those things you do not want. In effect, this is exactly what's happening. The underlying principle here is the law of cause and effect, which says that what we give out, we get back. As most people live life unconsciously, they inadvertently focus on that which they do not want. And guess what? The universal genie obliges by granting them their wishes. The negative circumstances show up in abundance. Whatever radio station you're tuned into, that's what you receive. Putting this information into the context of alcoholism, we come to realize why our lives aren't working. We have deduced that alcoholism is a set of maladaptive beliefs. Beliefs which give rise to the stinking thinking that feeds alcoholism. This stinking thinking usually involves concentrating on the things we abhor in life. Financial hardship, broken relationships, futility, devastation, powerlessness, and so on. As a consequence, the feelings we produce which correspond to these thoughts cause emanations is the surrounding ether. And these emissions serve as requests to the universal genie. Once again, the faithful genie grants our requests, and hey, presto, our lives become unbearable. The law of cause and effect has transmuted the pollution of our internal domain, stinking thinking, into the chaos in which we are immersed on a daily basis. To break this cycle of negative attraction, we must live life consciously. What is needed is self-mastery the ability to choose our thoughts and control our feelings in a manner conducive to optimal living. To do this, however, we must be aware of willpower and won't power. Willpower transpires from conscious intent, whilst won't power is the emotive force generated from our unconscious negative programming. Although we may make a conscious decision to change in all earnestness, our willpower is invariably overridden by the power of our unconscious negative programming. Imagine two radio stations broadcasting conflicting messages simultaneously. One is broadcasting positive messages, the other negative messages. The positive transmission has only one watt of power, whilst the negative transmission has a thousand watts. Due to this power imbalance, the negative transmission is going to propagate much further and have a far greater influence than the positive transmission. Exactly the same scenario applies to the requests we emit into the field of infinite possibilities. Our conscious intent is broadcast at one watt and will be obliterated by the thousand watts of our unconscious, unless we derive a method of amplifying our conscious intent. Fortunately, the ancient and indigenous people left us with a legacy in how we might achieve this. The key to amplifying our conscious intent to such an extent that it overrides our negative, unconscious programming lies in the power of our imagination. To manifest our desires, we must generate an internal scenario that is so powerful that it penetrates our unconscious. We must bring all our sense modalities into play, turn them inward, and see, hear, feel, taste, and smell our desired outcome. We must believe with every rudiment of our being that our request has already manifested. We must evoke a surge of emotion that pervades every cell, bone, and tissue of our body to
to generate a wave of emission so powerful that it overcomes any unconscious interference and broadcasts our request loud and clear. The Nature of Quantum Healing The power of the mind is demonstrated in its most potent form through the work of the medicinalist hospitals in China. These centers avoid traditional medicine and special diets in favor of exercise, love, and life energy. As they are learning the art of self-healing, the people who are sick, addressed as students, not patients, Western-trained doctors play only a minor role and prefer to be called teachers. Their main function is to diagnose students when they are admitted and again after a 24-hour period. After diagnosis, students are assigned to a class of about 50 people for a 24-day treatment. During this period, they spend eight hours a day practicing a healing technique called Chilel, a practice that provides spiritual nourishment and enlivens the life force in their bodies. Chilel is a synthesis of Qigong and contemporary medical knowledge. Qigong is a practice that involves aligning the breath, physical activity, and awareness to promote physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. During a typical treatment, a student's cancerous tumor is displayed on a screen and monitored by doctors. The teachers then surround the student and emit qi, the life force. Within a couple of minutes, the cancerous tumor generally dissolves before the doctor's eyes. A few days later, the student is checked by the doctors and the healing is usually confirmed. The hospitals have a success rate of 95% over a range of 180 different diseases. The degree of success is not only determined by what happens during treatment, but also by the commitment of the students to practice novel ways of nourishing their bodies after leaving the hospitals. People have miraculously recovered from incurable diseases such as cancer, diabetes, arthritis, and heart disease. Many have outlived their doctors by as much as 20 years. How does healing occur? Remember, Unlike linear time in which we have to wait for results, the concept of vertical time states that there are an infinite number of parallel realities in which every conceivable scenario already exists. Teachers at the medicinalist hospitals initiate an unfolding process in their bodies. As the contents of their imagination transpose into powerful feelings, they generate a field of information which interacts with the forces of creation and causes quantum changes in the matrix of consciousness that envelops both themselves and the student. The combined effort results in the activation of an alternative, parallel reality, in which the student's cancer does not exist. Summary we choose our desired reality through the power of belief. Whether it is rain in times of drought or a healing, we must believe it has manifested wholeheartedly. Although the limitations of our physical senses tell us that we are all individuals with defined boundaries, at the most primordial level of existence, we are all one. Our external reality mirrors our inner disposition. As within, so without. What we perceive in the mind, we receive from the universe. The space between our thoughts is pure potential, containing an infinite number of possibilities. The reality you desire already exists. You just have to choose it. Exercise. Mindfulness. Throughout the course of each day, become aware of the feelings you experience. Pay attention to the sensations in your body and become aware of the accompanying thoughts. Ask yourself the following questions. Am I concentrating on what I do want or what I do not want? Are these thoughts conducive to growth? Are these thoughts reoccurring? 